I'm charging everything. I've been doing virtual PT all day, and my phone is just dying to death. So. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. I figured you had a few sessions, man. Nice I'm little just, shoe collection over there. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd get it in the background, you know, standard. But also, I buy a charge point right here as well. So. Nice, man. How is how are the virtual sessions? Yeah, good. I thought they'd be awful, if I'm honest. And I was like telling people, oh, yeah, try, try them out with your clients. I'm just, uh, I don't know if it's sponsored by Pepsi Max, but. <laughs> yeah. It's if they right. could sponsor, that'd be great. They keep um, asking. They keep asking, but you know, they I'm, keep a, asking, I'm, yeah. I'm a Coca Cola guy. Holding up Coca Cola. Yeah, no, I thought they'd be horrific. The virtual sessions, if I'm honest, just a bit awkward to do like a screen. Yeah. So I just basically, I basically text all my clients um, as soon as we uh, were given more time, uh, and I was like, "Should we try it for a week? If it's, if it's crap, we'll just stick to me, just sending you programs or whatever." Yeah. Um, it did it really liked it so and they've all every, literally everyone i train i think apart from one is, is doing them and i just said like don't worry about however many sessions we'd normally do just just if you want to do six in a week we'll do six in a week like because i'm not i'm not busy so yeah, yeah. mate it's, so it's class it's surprising how good they're going down i think yeah no it's good fun yeah I it, like I, it, I, yeah i find it i find it interesting like i did one the other day um with a guy that I might be taking on for a bit of one-to-one and I was just like, man, this is fucking tough. Like, I mean, I was just trying to be all over the detail. And I was like, and I probably spent a good hour, 45 minutes with them. And I was just thinking, I can't keep doing that. Like, I can't go that long. Um, no, I, I don't, don't do any longer than 45 minutes. Yeah, that's decent. Because they already know what they're doing, yeah. don't they? Yeah. And also, like, if you think about it, in the house with a resistance band or like a few bits of kit, you want to smash it out in 45 anyway. Yeah. Hundo. Awesome, man. Well, listen, I, how long do you got? Uh, until half four, but I'm guessing you don't need me that long. Yeah, we'll so probably like we'll probably half. get a decent decent little hour if that's cool. Um, I'll start a timer. So I just lost I lost your audio there, bro, or your video. Yeah, no, sorry, no, but yeah, I don't know why I t- I took it off. I was on Wi-Fi. I've gone on to four G, so it doesn't cut me out. Hold on, let me do, no, this. Good. Let me do this. Um, yeah, I've got wow. I've literally got I've got my missus on the Wi-Fi. I've got you know way do you know way. Yeah, yeah, I know where I've met way before. Yeah, yeah. So she lives, she lives with us. So she's on the Wi-Fi. Everything's on the Wi-Fi. So I'm always just tripping out, thinking this is gonna be like five minutes in, it's gonna cut, but we'll be all right. Um, so listen, yeah. man. Look, I appreciate, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, so always. Yeah, man. So I'll do a bit of an intro. I've been recording anyway since you come on. I always record the first bit because one of my buddies was like. The first bit is always the best chat when people don't expect it. Yeah, um, and I was like, "Yeah, good point." But um, yeah, so welcome to the Fitness Burrito Podcast. This is episode six now. Uh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Get the dance moves in. So, um, yeah. pleasure of having a, a colleague of mine, Peter Williams, on. That's your name, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Middle so. name. Middle name. Uh, Bryn. It's a Welsh name. Okay, nice. Uh, so, actually, yeah. you know, kind of. Um, not necessarily funny, but realistically, we've only co- probably kind of known each other somewhat well for the last what month and a half, maybe, if that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, uh, yeah. Well, I've seen it. We've seen each other via social media, so you kind of get to know what well, you you know yeah, yeah. the the vision that they portray on social media, anyway. Yeah. Um, so obviously, we work for the same company, and Pete's kind of one of the one of the poster guys for uh for pure gym at the moment so yeah um so yeah just a quick intro i guess if you've never listened to the fitness brew podcast the podcast all about just kind of helping people out um applying maybe practical info that they wouldn't normally either have uh, in terms of resources or the understanding on how to do so and we're just kind of trying to help people get better gains man so whether that's nutrition training whatever that is so got the pleasure of having pete here pete's one of the influencers for pure gym it's kind of a big deal it's kind of a big deal. Uh, <laughs> he's pretty. He's pretty popular guy on the socials. Let's just say he's. Uh, he's got some. He's got a pretty good sense of humor, man. Like I was just telling Sky, who's another one of our colleagues, who's been on the episodes recently, and we were saying today, I was like, man, he's got good, good shit, man. He's good crack. Um, and I was just because we didn't, know, we didn't know you before. And the thing is, like our bosses, who are Nick and Ant, who again, Ant's been on a recent podcast. When they let people in. Yeah, it takes a few days for us to figure out if they're the right if they're the right fit. But mate, you fit right in there. Um, yeah, so, I like uh, everyone's very 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 banter in there. Yeah, with the yeah. PT mentors. Yeah, yeah, which is good. Defo, man. So listen, I think that's a decent little intro. But you introduce yourself, man. So tell the people who you are, where you're from, what you're kind of doing, and all that stuff. 
Marvellous. Well, that was the better intro than I could have ever given. Uh, so obviously, <laughs> I work with Dan. Dan Kibion. That's right. Got that right. Yeah, Kibion. Uh, yeah. Like, 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 like Kiwi, but not. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I'm in based in Cardiff. I was there PT, just flat out PT for three and a half years. Then became assistant manager, then manager, uh, and then PT mentor. So I've been in the same uh, place, I suppose, uh, in Cardiff for about five and a half years. Nice, man. How's cool, Cardiff actually. treating you? How's Cardiff treating you? Mate, I love Cardiff. Like, I'm, well, I'm from here. I would never, never, ever leave here. Really? Um, yeah, no, big time. I'm where there is. But yeah, I did a thing recently, I suppose, on Instagram. I put my, like, my top 10 things that I don't like that everyone else likes. I put traveling on there. Wow, okay. weird. But uh, I like this lockdown right now is like, it's perfect. I'm like, <laughs> sit in the house, yeah. don't speak to anyone, only speak to people you already know, which is really negative, I understand. But yeah, yeah it's nice. Um, I hear good yeah, things, no, man. Good I've heard go. sick things about Cardiff. It's a good night out, definitely. It's like the it's it is. It's like a little mini. It's like busy where you want it to be busy, but also they've got like so like the Butte Park in Cardiff is fun fact uh, the biggest inner city, the second sorry biggest inner city park in the world, um, apart from Central Park in New York. Really, that's pretty cool. Yeah, someone's going to be like, fact. no, it's not. No, it, it, you see, I tell people, yeah. I tell people because I'm in Leeds, and I always tell people that Roundhay Park's yeah. the biggest park in England, and I'll probably just chat and shit. But it seems fucking big, so I, I'm yeah. assuming yours. But it's is in England bigger. anyway, so yeah, yeah. yeah well, Butte Park's like it's like it's like four parks in one. It just keeps going. It's absurd. Oh, it's nice, man. And is it? And again, yeah. I know this is a, a random question, but I feel like there's a big music scene down there. Is that just me? Yeah, uh, yeah, I suppose there is like there's quite a lot of little places for like indie bands and bits to go in, but a lot of them are actually closing down in the last few years. I think two or three music menus have actually closed because oh. of landlords, and then they replace them for like a trendy cocktail bar. Nice. You can't get enough of those. Seems to. Uh, no, you can't. There's not enough. Yeah, there's not enough cocktail bars or um, fitness Instagram pages. Those are the two things that we need more of. So. Nice, man. Cool. So sweet. Nice little intro there. B ends. And was like, it's all 20 minutes after he said he wouldn't do 20 minutes. So sweet. So uh, <laughs> I know we chatted a little bit about kind of some stuff that we're going to talk about. And I thought it'd be cool to talk about, you know, aspects of obviously social media, because you're big on that aspects of just motivation, things that you're currently doing, just tips and and advice that you might be able to give to certain people. Because I think at the moment you're doing this thing, hashtag, was it quarantine lean? Is it? No, just corn lean. Corn lean. Sorry, it sounds corn like cor- it sounds like corn. Quarantine. Sounds you should be you should be sponsored corn. by corn or something. I literally just had that corn, for lunch. Yeah. So yeah, corn. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go give to a <laughs> shout out. Um. So I'll, I'll go right into the first question, man. We'll just dive straight into the deep end. So, um, my first question is. By the way, I send these guys questions. So it's not like I always put them on the spot, but sometimes I do. But Pete, this time around, more, is more fun on the spot, yeah. Yeah. Um, so first question, man. So, what are some of your top tips for people at home right now, potentially struggling with COVID? And I think I was looking at it more from like a mental mindset, motivation perspective. So I don't know if you want to dive into that. I guess just some things you're doing or with clients. Yeah, uh, I think the big one, like it's different for there's two there's two sets of people right now. There's people that are working from home. And then there's people that have been furloughed or they can't do their job. So they're just stuck at home doing nothing. And yeah. I think the people who work from home, they've, they've uh, weirdly actually probably got it a little bit better because they've still got a structure. They've still got to do work maybe nine to five or maybe not mm. quite that, but similar to that. So they've still got their routine and regularity and that's fine. But um, the people that don't, like the people that are furloughed or, or can't do their job for any reason or, or it's been massively disrupted, I think they'll find it hard. Um, if you look at like the top 10 stresses that things up there, you've got things like moving house, getting married, divorce, whatever, but like up there is job ambiguity. Okay. Um, and if you look at like job ambiguity, it's like, that's a perfect example of say you're currently furloughed or you're working from home or your, your job's been disrupted. You might feel like completely lost and like ambiguity is a massive, um, a massive like stress. So I think the best thing you can do is kind of set yourself a routine. And if you don't, if you literally don't have anything to do, Mm -hmm. then can you create a task for yourself can you do some self-learning can you be like right i'm going to do a workout every day at this time i'm gonna um i don't know even if it's something silly like i'm gonna play my xbox for two hours and you're gonna like do something on a game or something just to keep you occupied and give you like structure throughout the day not just like i'm just gonna do this for a bit that for a bit um that sort of ambiguity is kind of like really uh i think that's the biggest issue right now so if you can kind of get rid of that give yourself structure 
whether it's mm. writing a whiteboard every day or whatever i think that'll be a big thing to kind of get over um get over the stresses of right now but obviously i exercise is obviously such a great medicine yeah and every time you train you, you feel great afterwards so that's a big one really for me is make sure you're training regularly and have structure to your day cool i was just about to say i was like you know for the people out there who might be like me so i'm french canadian so i can get away with asking this question but what the hell yeah. is the definition of ambiguity i don't even know if i pronounce ambiguity it right. oh, oh so, so like uh job ambiguity is, is kind of not knowing what you're meant to be doing so like when i started Gaia. as a pt mentor like last month and i was like i don't know what to do on the data like is this right is that not right like yeah. people some people like don't like not knowing what is going on they need to have like a this and that and this and that so like for a normal gym job like both for for um your gym obviously we've got documents where we follow it almost like line by line by line so you yes yeah, so you know exactly what you're doing and it's standardized mm. but if, that is like a, a really good for some people, but other people obviously not. But yeah, to not have that structure really stresses people out. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Because I'm just I'm always thinking as people that might not know what the hell we're talking about, or if we yeah. drop terms or words. <laughs> and to be fair, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, I kind of know what that means, but let's just get some clarification. Um, yeah, yeah. You know what? And I was talking. I was talking to another um, a coach yesterday, a friend of mine that we do some bits and bobs together, and we were just saying like again kind of piggybacking on your point which is you know some people might be furloughed some people might still be working some people might be again in a really really shit situation and there's nothing wrong right with being the complete opposite of everything we just said and just chilling watching netflix all day like yeah. sometimes <laughs> yeah. sometimes we have to remember that the main goal out of anything we do right so like as fitness professionals as coaches at the end of the day i just want you to be happy right and i know that sounds yeah, yeah, super super cheesy but if happy for you is I don't give a shit what I look like. I want to sit down, watch Game of Thrones all over again, right? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah, I think most people definitely are lacking routine structure and probably just need to have maybe a bit of a sense of purpose, don't they? If they want to just kind of like yeah. wake up every morning in this this crazy situation. Yeah, and that's the thing. For me, like, I actually love just sitting and watching Netflix all day, playing my Xbox all day, and then training walking my dog and that's it like if i like, i used to say yeah. to people i would i would retire tomorrow and people like you wouldn't get bored of it not honestly i would I, all i need to do is train yeah. watch tv walk my dog that's it that's all i need in my life yeah um but yeah it depends i it, like it for some people it's such a drastic change you're probably like like i've been in you know working especially when you're first in pt you, your time management's rubbish you're working half six in the morning till nine o'clock at night a lot yeah. of the time yeah um so it's actually this is so unique to be like actually i could get up at seven o'clock every day instead of five o'clock like that yeah. makes such a difference so it's I, I like i'm absolutely embracing that i think it's such a good reset but yeah i know for some people they don't like uncertainty so yeah 100 percent, man and i think again and i was saying this i was doing a insta live yesterday with another coach you i don't remember if you um don't know if you remember a guy called james used to work in Nuneaton back in the day um, and nah, i think he I was a gm in Coventry. but anyways we were just talking about like how for us it's a massive opportunity, but I really want to stress that I didn't want that to come across as being a dickhead because I know some people are yeah. in a really, really bad spot. But I guess for us, it's been the massive kind of like, oh, well, I can actually get up and yeah, add a bit of structure to read a bit, walk the dog, play FIFA yeah. 20 with the boys or whatever yeah, uh, and, and have some fun. So cool. Awesome. It's all about, all about COD, COD Warzone right now. I'm gonna try mate, that. mate. I'm getting, I'm getting your idea as soon as it's over. <laughs> Man, it's free. It's free, man. It's the best thing ever. The best thing I've yeah. ever played with my friends. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, man. Cause I've, I've always, again, side tangent it has nothing to do with fitness whatsoever, but all my boys are all from are all in Canada. So like the time difference yeah. is killing me. So it's like three in the morning and they're all like, let's get on it. And I'm like, fuck. No. This, yeah. Yeah. So I need, I need that UK squad. It's slowly building. It's yeah. Slowly nah. building. I'll get you in. It's up to four now, isn't it? You can play four at a time. So yeah. Good to get in. Game changer. Game changer. Okay, cool. So just the last one on that, mate, what's been one of the biggest challenges that you've had with some of your clients in terms of like helping them structure their routine and stuff? Like what's been coming back? Uh, so I, the first week when we were still doing like the working from home, I was just sending them like daily workouts. Mm -hmm. And then kind of when I actually kind of got a bit more time to actually interact and have a chat with them, most of some of them had done the workouts, but most of them hadn't. Yeah. So like it is difficult, I think, um, kind of getting when you're sat at home all day to then go, right now I'm going to go and train. It is like, it's hard enough to motivate yourself to go to a gym, which is a, like an actual motivational environment. Yeah. So in the house, so I think by doing the virtual one-to-one -one sessions, 
mm-hmm. that has actually massively overcome it because they've gone right i've set this time i'm not going to let pete down and i'm the same thing right? i'm going to go and uh, be there for i'm not going to be like any sort of reason why they don't train by like cancelling or yeah can't be bothered i'd rather just sit around um so that way like that i think giving them like an account really and time really to come mm-hmm. and like spend time together and actually just have a chat rather than just chatting to the people you live with yeah so yeah, and just seeing if they've watched Tiger King and stuff like that. So. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, good old, good old Cheryl Baskets. Um, yeah. I love, I love how like everybody's on it. It's crazy how things go viral, eh? Like, are you, are you on, are you on TikTok yet? Uh, no. So I was on TikTok a while ago, and then I just, I, I can't, I, I'm, I can't do the dancing. Like, I can dance, but I just can't hack <laughs> doing like a dance on TikTok. I've got quite a few. I did one with like um, a glass of water on TikTok where I did like. Um, it was really creative and I think it should have got more views, but it didn't. Um, that's the worst yeah, part, yeah, man. Was, that's the worst yeah. part. People are trash and they're blowing up and I'm like, yo, I'm yeah, spending so much time trying to get this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just, I said, it, it always helps if you're not male, but um, yeah. yeah, I did one with a glass of water. So I was like emptying the glass of water and I was like, oh, look, if you're in a calorie deficit every day this week, I pour a bit more out, pour a bit more out, pour a bit more out. And then it gets to Saturday, you have four pizzas, six donuts, and a burger. And then I just, the next clip was just a, a tap, just like spraying all over the water glass, like, <laughs> yeah, explaining like weight loss with a glass. Yeah. I would have liked it. It was really creative. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It died yeah. a death. But yeah. I haven't even logged on for it. I get like notifications from there, but. Yeah. I was just going to say, because man, things just like, it's just, things just catch on fire. It's like the Tiger King, and then God knows what's next. And then it's just, yeah, yeah. you're just going to ride the waves, man. Um, but cool. All right. So if we move to the next question, then. So my next question was, just going to have a quick look at my notes here. So it was more to do with just kind of like training and nutrition, because I think that's the big one that a lot of people are not necessarily struggling with, but I think sometimes you just need a bit of guidance, a bit of support and understanding how they can actually probably get decent results and gains from home. Yeah. I think yeah, you're yeah. a good example of this. And I, I don't know if you've got, do you have a lot of like equipment and stuff at home or are you just kind of doing no, it? I've, I've literally got one resistance band. That is cool. it. <laughs> so perfect. So I think this will massively yeah. relate to people. So I guess for you, what's been your current workout structure? And then what's been, how are you kind of managing to stay on top of your nutrition? Because obviously when you're bored and you might lack structure and all the rest, like we talked about earlier, you're probably going to be more likely yeah. to fall off the, the wagon a bit. But I think for you, you're kind of striving. Uh, but that sounds yeah, a bit, yeah. you're like, yeah, fine. yeah. let's go COVID-19 go, all day. Let's go for it, yeah. For me, like, there's there's no reason right now to mess up. Like, boredom is not a reason for me. But, like, I understand when people have, like, birthdays and events and social occasions. I understand that sometimes those do come ahead of fitness. Mm. Um, not for me, but for most people, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> <Sure>. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm staying in the house. But uh, I don't care if the quarantine's over. I'm staying in. But no, um, <laughs> it's... Yeah, but I think so. That is difficult. So I think this is a great opportunity um, to go for it. So I've just been doing upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower. Um, okay. I'm not taking a rest day because I sit around the house all day. Um, and then I've, I've actively made the decision not to go for runs. I, I'm just walking the dog, uh, mainly because I, I am walking the dog. Uh, I'll probably walk her at least once. Sometimes I have to do it twice, obviously, because she needs a toilet. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the government guidelines are to only exercise once a day. Yeah, you can't break, so the, can't break the guidelines, Pete. Yeah. Not for Boris. No, I, you know. <laughs> uh, he's paying my wages, like so. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I've got yeah. So basically, that is it. So that's all I've done, and I and realistically, like I, I know a lot of people are taking up running now and whatever. Like mm. you don't burn the amount of calories you'll burn on a five k run or a five k walk are actually very very similar. Um, so I think if you don't like running, don't feel pressured. You have to. So I've just gone for that. I've gone for an upper workout and a lower workout mm-hmm. uh, every other day, obviously, and then walk every day. But I'm just like in terms of training, like obviously body weight is only it's quite limited and with a band. So you have to be clever. You have to use things like time and tension, you know, isometric holds. You have to like control it like maybe 10 seconds down on a press up and then up. Ten, yep. Like stuff that you would never normally do because it's just like actually quite long and I don't know, time consuming. But it's not like you're doing anything else. So you may as well make the most of the sessions. And that's and that's what I've been doing with my clients as well. Mm-hmm. And they've all been like to be fair, I've been sweating streams of gas from doing the workouts. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, it's then, different, just different stimulus, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, definitely. And then of course, like you can do stuff like the stuff we do with it with the PT mentors, which is more like uh, arm wraps, where it's like ten burpees, this, that, and the other, uh, yeah. to really get sweat on as well, if you really wanted to. So. Cool. So just quickly for anyone who doesn't know what a hell an isometric hold is or whatever, what, yeah, what yeah. does that look like? Uh, oh, so for example, like go into the bottom of a squat and just sit in there for like maybe I don't know. 20 seconds before you come up something like that yeah just to hold it yeah 
get the tension, get the leg shaking. Get... Yeah, yeah, defo. And you're going to get stronger in those positions too. So I guess like that's yeah. kind of, it's kind of similar to, you know, some people, if they used to do a bench press, for example, they used to hold the bar like an inch off their chest on the way up and do like a, what are they called? Like yeah, a yeah. auto bench or whatever. Um, yeah. It's kind of the same thing. You're just doing an isometric hold, but cool. What are you doing with your rep ranges? Because that's the big one. That's like when Ant was on. And by the way, I keep saying this guy that some people are like, who the hell is Ant? So Ant's basically our boss. Yeah. Uh, he's not really. Yeah. He likes to think he is, but he's not. Um, yeah. But he, we were talking about how there's a lot of people in the fitness industry that are on one side of the fence that say like, oh, you can get bigger or you can get, you can lose weight or whatever. And then on the other side of the fence, there's people saying, no, 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 you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. So what yeah. are you doing with your reps? Are you just more so focused on the tempo, which is when Pete said he takes like 10 seconds to go down and up, or are you kind yeah. of focused on going higher rep ranges? What do you do? Um, it's really interesting like, because I think higher rep ranges, like realistically body weight, you're looking at like, so you're doing squats, sets of 50, which is, it seems like quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm definitely more focused on tempo. I, I go more from feel, like I try and set myself a target. I'll do 15 of these, which is higher than I probably normally do in, in the gym. Mm -hmm. um, but like if I'm really, it's really burning and I'm like, right, I can only do eight or nine of these and I'll just stop on eight or nine and then kind of like work it out from there. Cause a lot of this for myself, like I haven't been doing home workouts for more than a month because that's how long we've been home. Like, so yeah, it's trial and trial and like improvement for myself. So yeah, it's definitely that I go for more tempos and reps. Obviously some movements you can do more than others, like a pistol squat, for example, I couldn't do more than 10 reps. I'd collapse. So yeah. it's like, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, it's trying to work out like, how would you kind of, how do you fit all that in? But yeah, then for for example, like, I don't know, say I stick the band in the door and do tricep push downs, I could do sets of twenty three. And if it's feeling good, just keep going. Yeah. That's uh I'm a big, big fan of feel, but even when we're not quarantined, if I'm PTing or training in the gym, I'll still train with that sort of mindset. So cool. So do you find it good when you're in the gym, would you be tracking your weights? Or are you kind of again just going based on RPE, which is rate of perceived exertion? So anybody who doesn't know what that nice. is, is basically one to ten. Tens, you're literally at technical failure. One's like, I'm in bed chilling, watching Tiger King, right? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you tend to do when you're training? Are you doing more RPE feel? Or are you just kind of going, oh, it's burning, sweet? Yeah, it's interesting. I like, I used to really care. Like, I used to actually care how much I could bench press, deadlift, squat, all those things. Yeah. And then about maybe like four years ago, I just mm -hmm. stopped caring. So like, for me, like, this will sound really weird. Like, some people will train because they want the ends, like the means to the ends. But yeah. I, I actually prefer the means to the ends. So I prefer the training than actually the end result. If that oh, mate, sense. you so just, like you just, that went over so many people's heads. <laughs> yeah. I was like trying to listen to you. I was like means to the ends, but means to the ends. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so like most people just see, they have to train because they want to look good on the beach. Like, yeah, of yeah. course I like looking good on the beach, but I just like training. So yeah, I used yeah, to yeah. care and, and I used to be like, oh, I want to be able to bench press more than anyone else. But like, I, I honestly don't care. So for me, I just go in, I just want to have a workout. So yeah. if I'm busy and I need to train with one of my clients, I will just do their session with them. And obviously that's not what I would normally do because it's their session that's personal to them. But yeah. um, just to like keep everything going. Um, but yeah, RP is good. Like I, as I said, I used to really like track progress. And, and with clients, obviously, I'll do that with certain lifts, like you squat, deadlift, bench press. I don't see the point of tracking your progress on the like assisted dip machine um or like the preacher kill machine is probably a better example because it's <laughs> you know you kind of using those as accessory movements um yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah cool. it doesn't stress me yeah i think that's the main thing i'm not too stressed about um i think that's good though because a lot of yeah. a lot of people wouldn't have that relationship with training where they feel like well actually i don't know i'm assuming there i think a lot of people do have that relationship where they're kind of like i just enjoy doing it and then if I look good off the back of it, sweet. And I think a lot of other yeah, people great. are, I think when you're younger, you're just like, I'm going to get fucking jacked. I'm going to get shredded. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to be single. And like, you guys don't really have amazing. Well, uh, I don't want to say that in case somebody ha comes, comes for me, but like, do you guys have great beaches your way? I know you said you have a bay. Uh, there's one in like Tembe. Uh, yeah. It's not like, you know, it's not like Marbella. Yeah. Like we got so, some nice yeah. beaches at home. Like, you know what I mean? You live yeah. for the summer and you know, you're, you're trying to look the part. So that, it was a big deal. Yeah. A big deal. Yeah. Cool. But it's not, yeah, it's getting bigger deal here, but you yeah, know, I definitely agree. I mean, if this weather keeps it up, mate, damn right. It'll be, it'll be a good, it'll be a good time. We'll, we'll, all, we'll all die of coronavirus if this weather keeps up because no one will stay in our house. So <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, we're just joking by the way. We're at, we don't actually take that seriously. So, you know, we hope you're doing okay. <laughs> We hope you're staying safe and well. Um, stay home. Stay, yeah, stay home. Big time. Um, Don't so, Yeah. So just on the nutrition bit, just that last bit was, 
Yeah. How are you? How are you? I, I know you're a big tracker because you said this morning you're tracking everything. Yeah. Um, so you're just using my fitness pal, are you? Yeah. So I'm like, I remember going to a pure lifestyle talk with Ant and Nick about two years ago. Mm-hmm. And they said, oh, who's been tracking the calories for X amount of time? So, and anyway, it ended up with basically Ant saying oh, I was strange. Um, <laughs> the, I've basically pretty much track calories uh, Monday to Friday. And then I, in certain times, then I will um track over the weekend if it's like a build-up to a holiday uh yeah. since i was like 18 so i'm 27 now so it's like nine years where i pretty much track calories monday to friday minimum okay. sometimes more but like well that's nine years is so that for me, because you're like very structured standard. though like do you like structure do you like being meticulous with numbers and everything is that just kind of no it's are? it's actually like if i don't do it i generally under eat which is weird okay uh, so some people overeat but i'll under i'll just go oh i don't know I don't, I don't know where i'm at i feel hungry but like in my so i'm like very logical so if i'm like oh i feel hungry but i look at like my, my fitness panel i was like well i've eaten all my calories i'm like well you're not hungry then because you've eaten all your calories and that's it that's the end of the discussion <laughs> but if i don't know where i'm at then i'm like ah oh, maybe i'm maybe i haven't eaten enough maybe i don't know what i'm at and i do suffer with migraines i don't get them so much anymore mm. but being consistent with my food really helps kind of knock them out of the park that's cool. But yeah, but my food habits are terrible. Like I'll eat, as I said, I'll eat a packet of party rings every single day because I'm a massive, like mm-hmm. in picture macros guy. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I just fit, it's 498 calories in a packet of party rings. There you I'll go. You weighed, you I just, weighed it every single yeah, one. <laughs> yeah, 25, 25 calorie per uh, party ring. I just love it. But I know some people, for some people, this is so alien to hear that sort of like tracking. I don't know what you're like. I used to be brown rice and chicken but that's just not their life yeah so. it's funny we li- we did we did a video because in our in our um community group we do a live q a every wednesday um and even if nobody comes on we'll just do a chat based on what people have been asking that week so we yeah. did a one we did a little bit of one yesterday and i've been reading um, a book well a few of eric helms's book recently yeah um have you read him before no i know of him i know matt Ogus loves him doesn't he yeah. So, but he, he just, he talks about kind of energy um, and like tracking stuff slightly differently. And he has a cool kind of way of looking at it, which is like flexibility, and accuracy. Um, and I've always kind of been like, if it fits your macros kind of thing too. Like I, I don't, I don't want to take, tell people that they can't eat cookies, chips and can't drink beer. Right. Yeah. Like to me, if, if you cut all those things out, you're going to hate your diet. And if you make it too rigid, yeah. again, there's evidence that suggests that people that have a crazy, crazy rigid diet are more likely to lose the weight and pile all of it back on and more down the road versus somebody who builds more sustainable relationship with food and finds those methods and tricks that are going to help them. So for you, it's my fitness pal. Whereas for, me it might not be and then for the next person it might just be that you have to be more mindful and reflect but yeah he talks about flexibility versus accuracy which is kind of a cool way of looking at it so basically if you're our friend pete burnside who's a pro physique model he's gonna have to probably tilt the scale in the favor of accuracy and just making sure that everything's pretty much on point because if he decides to go the other way and say well i'm just gonna be flexible as fuck and eat whatever i want he's probably not gonna be a physique model that much longer right (laughs) so i think it's like people i think most people want to have a bit of both but sometimes people don't want to go through the process which is kind of something i mentioned today on the insta post it's like people want things now right um, and it yeah. takes time and you have to get you know either educated you have to get a bit of support you have to get a coach and this is where i think why the fad diets are so popular because people go oh well my mate lost 20 pounds in two months so i'm gonna go do that and then in five yeah. months they're like well yeah. i'm actually two stone heavier and i'm like i wonder why <laughs> i wonder why yeah so, yeah definitely so it's a weird one but yeah i think it's cool man i literally just started my uh, tracking today because i want to see roughly how much i'm eating so i'm using it just to kind of get a bit more um yeah a bit more like awareness i I generally ask clients to do it like maybe once once a month if they can like one like a week of the month just to kind of so they kind of get because once you've done it that you kind of know what you're doing then yeah exactly but you know what's the worst though the one thing i'll say is when like today just started it right things are going great then the missus goes oh we're gonna make this new recipe and then you're like, oh, oh no. Jesus. And then you got to weigh everything No out. new recipes. No, yeah. no, no recipes. <laughs> Keep it simple. Um, yeah. Because then that's when you're just like, oh, it takes you like a good 10, 15 minutes to find the shit and then track it. And, yeah. and then it's like oh, no. portion side. No, ain't, no, ain't nobody got time for that. Cool. Nope. All right. Decent, man. I think that was good on that one. Um, all right. So now we get on to a little bit more of the social media side because, you know, 
for those of you guys that don't know, stop, stop, stop. Peter Williams over here is a, a social media connoisseur, we shall say. So, Pete, what are your social media? So I actually kind of thought I'd twist it a little bit because, right, love um, it. yeah. So what are your thoughts on social media in general? Okay. And what is it that you like and what is it that you d- dislike? And what I mean by dislike is like, what do you fucking hate about social media? Uh, because Lovely. you're probably, you're probably somebody who'll get a little bit more, um, what's the word? You'll probably get a bit more kind of like, you know, just DMs and people just like shitting on you and probably messaging you every now and then because you've got a lot of followers. So yeah, just chat, yeah, chat it's through weird. that. Uh, social media in general, I think is a good thing. Okay. But I think ov- obviously it can be used for evil. Um, mm-hmm. Like in the most, you know, the, it's, it is worrying how many people get their news now from social media, which yeah. means shows how easily manipulated we are. Yeah. Um, the analytics are crazy. Obviously the algorithms and stuff now are kind of designed so that money wins. So like someone, like you couldn't set up an Instagram account now and grow it without spending lots of money on sponsored ads. It just wouldn't, it's just impossible. We're kind of, whoever's big now will be big forever. That's why TikTok's become so popular because it doesn't have an algorithm so you can grow the page and you can actually get views and likes without spending money because it's not monetized. Yeah. Um, it is good and you can get good things. Obviously you can consume too much of the wrong people. And for me, I've always said like, if someone doesn't like my stuff, like the unfollow button is right there. Just don't follow me. Yeah. Um, and the same with, if I don't like, if I, if I see one person, if there's someone I'm like, I follow and I don't like one of their posts, I'll probably just unfollow them there and then. Cause I'm like, if I don't like it, if I don't agree, if I like don't agree with it that much, mm. it's, it's a goner for me. Um, but yeah, and, how, so and overall, think about, it's good. sorry, I was going to say, think about how quickly people judge you just off the back of one post too. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah like it's, gone. You're gone. Yeah. It's like, cool. Unfollow you. <laughs> see you later. Never want to see you again. And then you're definitely like yeah. in your head, you're like, that guy's a dickhead or she's a dickhead. She sucks. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. probably negative, really nice. Negative. Or he's probably really nice. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's so. the thing though. And it's, it's a highlight reel, isn't it? No one's showing their, their shit stuff on, on social media. No one's going, Oh, look how bad my life is. How bad my day is. It's like, look how great my life is. It's yeah. so good. Um, but yeah, that is, so then that in general is a good thing. You can learn from it. You can community on it, whatever I think. But yeah, the reasons I like it is because it's fun. Um, and I don't take things too seriously. Like I don't like, I know some people really struggle with comparing themselves to others yeah. and, and stuff like that. And I think if you do struggle with that sort of stuff, then maybe social media is not, not the right thing for you. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't want to be 16 again. No. And cause when I was 18, Facebook just kind of came around. Instagram yeah. wasn't until I kind of left uni. So that was fine, but I wouldn't yeah. want to be 16 again now. Cause I think that there's so much like uh, pressure. Man. pressure. Time. Yeah. And for like, I think, I think more so for like girls and boys as well, but again, that's uh, up for debate, but I just think, yeah, yeah, it's difficult. Definitely. But yeah. Yeah. I think the things that I like it for, I said, it's fun. I like just having fun with it. I like expressing myself. Um, obviously my account currently is, uh, it's kind of like orientated with work. So it's very, I don't swear on there. Um, and mm. it's more trying to help people or it's trying to be like the moment with my quarantine it's trying to do like a diary entry to collect so people can see it and see that I'm doing it and it gives them like motivation to keep going. That's the yeah. like method behind it. That's the idea behind it anyway. Do you find that uh, annoying though that it's associated through work? Yes. Yeah. So I've got another account, which is just my personal account, um, which I don't post. Well, I, I just post like, I post with no hashtags and no ha- captions or anything like that because I'm not trying to grow. It'll be like a one line caption or something. I won't try. I'm not trying to grow that page. That's just fun to post. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've always thought like, I've always I've said to my girlfriend before, like if, social media if i wasn't doing the work one would i just turn it off mm. um and it, I, I might do because i was doing it heavily when i was a pt like i was growing my page loads and then i became assistant manager and i just like didn't post on there for like a year takes time man. and uh, yeah and it, it killed me because when we the, we looked at our follower analytics when i first started working with pure gym and emily who was the social media manager said look you've got all these followers but actually because you've been inactive for a year and the way the algorithm algorithms change you've got those followers that aren't seeing your posts so like um t- only about 10 percent of your followers see what you're posting um, is that and again for, is that on average sorry is that just like most people that's on, on, yeah on average yeah most people so say so at the time i, had, I think i had like sixteen thousand followers um which i'd spent like, to be fair i spent absolutely ages doing like following liking comments i used to because when, when you're a pt you've got the time to do it hmm. but then as soon as i became full-time employed as well as pt i didn't have the time to do it i didn't care um 
but yeah, so it's going through and through and basically it, and you just come a bit stagnant, but Instagram decides, like, so you'll probably notice it yourself. Some weeks you'll have loads of likes and reach in this. And then the next week it will drop right down. But they do that on purpose because you're like, I want the high, I want the high reach and likes again. So you'll pay to like sponsor the post. Go, yeah. Um, so you're better off like, like newer accounts seem to do better since the algorithm, older accounts like mine where I've got like followers. I ended up, I blocked 5,000 people. Um, really? basically went on an, went on an app that said if anyone who hadn't liked any of your last hundred photos block. So I was like, yeah, sound. If they're not liking any of my last hundred photos, they're not supporting me anyway. So block. Then it was like, I was like 5,000 people just because I, did, I wanted, if only 10% of my followers are seeing the posts, I want it to be a good 10%. Yeah. Yeah. No, makes I, mean? sense. I don't want it to be people that don't care. So yeah, that, that is good. And, and it is fun. But yeah, I think if I wasn't doing it for work, I'd probably just sack off my main one and just do my like fun one. Yeah, but you, cool. I'd probably keep keep it on a back burner. You never know, but um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it is tough though because it's just everything's so saturated. Obviously, especially in the fitness world, and now that everybody's trying to be an yeah. online coach and everyone's trying to go for it. But yeah, some cool little bits that you dropped there. I guess just to piggyback, and I know I didn't prep you for these questions, but like guys that are wanting to grow their social media that are maybe I don't know around five hundred thousand or five hundred followers. Sorry, not five hundred thousand. Five hundred yeah. followers you know, under 2K and they want to start building, what would you suggest they start doing? The best, like weirdly, the best thing to do actually is to actually like physically interact. So like whether you reach out to other people in your area for like collaborations, like, I've met up with like loads of people from Cardiff that have got good followings. Uh, a lot of them have actually ended up then going and doing stuff with PureGym because of like the my association, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like that's a good way. So you reach out, you get on their page, they get on your page. I used to do Fresh Kicks Friday every Friday where you tag people and then other people tag you and it's on the story and your name pops up everywhere. Cool. Um, you know, there's no point, like I just spent ages used to follow accounts, follow, 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 all that sort of stuff. That's dead now. That's not like Instagram stopped that because they knew it, it just doesn't, it, you get blocked. If you follow too many people in the day or like too many accounts in the day, you get blocked. Yeah, and it's pointless anyway because you just get a of, like crappy companies following you back. So I focus on actually doing real things. So like actually being, if you want a presence, then be present. So like hmm. go and see people, go and like posts, actually comment on posts that you actually like care about and have interaction with people. Yeah, so they know you more than just like an account. Like how many times do we just swipe past next, next, next? Yeah, like, yeah, it yeah it's, happens, isn't it? It's so true, and I think again it goes back to it's social media. So you got to be social. Like if you're just yeah, thinking yeah. everything's gonna come at you. Um, it's not going to work. I mean, look, this is the, there's a reason why I try to put my hand in different pots and I try to kind of, it's almost like Gary V. You know how Gary V creates content and uses that one piece of content for like a million things. Yeah. I, I kind of try to do that a little bit more now because it just becomes so difficult to create stuff for your Facebook and then your Insta and then for your podcast. Yeah. And, it's, and it's like, it's just mad. But I, the one thing I've already noticed is kind of to your point, just reaching out to other people and just like having fun with it. Um, and if you get reward off the back of it, you build a better following. And I think that's a cool thing that you talked about how you blocked 5,000 people. Cause I think a lot of people probably yeah. raise their eyebrows there and go, Oh, well that's going to make me look less popular. Well, yeah, but you're probably gonna get better engagement, better results off the back. Yeah. Of it. And that's what I, and that's what I did. I got better engagement and better. So yeah, cool. Awesome. But nice yeah. one. I like that. I like that. Some good nuggets in there. Um, <laughs> cool. So flavor of the week segment so every episode we do so i don't know if um you, you knew this about the, the fitness burrito but the whole idea was anybody used to come in if they came to my house or went to theirs i'd always basically cook a burrito right i was just oh, like right, just make it different right if you're vegan veggie whatever I'll, we'll always have a meal so we've had some big cookouts before a show and stuff like that um so obviously we can't do that right now because of social distancing. Yeah. But I always have a flavor of the week segment where I'll either pick a journal article or I'll pick something where we can just discuss it and get your thoughts. But I thought with you, uh, we just kind of talked through some best practices or key wins to help people build a bigger social media following, which we kind of just went over. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess what would be the top three things you would do if we just recap that? Uh, top, so top three. Uh, lots of posts of your face smiling. I think a lot okay. of people are like, um, you, that, that sounds really basic, right? But if you go on a lot of people's accounts, look for their face. Like you don't see people's faces at all. No, you, you it's don't. bizarre. Like you really don't. So people's faces smiling. So that's a big one. Um, workout is the post. Every post is it either informative or like uh, entertaining. Like what, what does it actually, does it give information or is it going to make people smile or make people like be enjoyed or motivated? Something like that. Don't yeah. just post like 
you know, I post lots of my dog on my story, but I wouldn't just post my dog on as an actual post because <laughs> yeah. uh, that doesn't. It's right, some entertainment, but minimal. And then, yeah, then the third thing then obviously is um, actually be social. So like interact with other accounts and like try and do like when you do like I did a live with one of uh, one of the PTs in Cardiff Central yesterday, um, and just doing things like that where you can kind of like get on each other's pages and just actually be social, become a human, so people don't just think you're a person behind a screen. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Top three <laughs> tips, P. Williams. And then oh. topless photos. No, yeah, I mean, you love a good topless <laughs> photo, don't you? You love a couple. It's Mate, all right. Wait, 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 wait till Friday. Quarantine, days, <laughs> whatever it is. It's all right. You know what? Or... See, I really like, there's some days I'm just like, you know what? I got a bit of a pump on and fuck it. I'm going to do it. But then I'm just... You know what? It's just because I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for like a few of the boys that we work with to just rip me. And I'm just like, I might as well just do it. Get out of the way now. Get out of the way. You just got to let go and let God in it. Just let, let him do it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I mean, we're never going to be Pete Burnside level. Like, you know what I mean? No. I mean, maybe you will one day, but I ain't gonna not, not yet. Not yet. No. Um, the only last question I'll ask on that one, because you mentioned it, was sponsored posts and put money behind it yeah now, it's interesting this is something i've tried right and i've actually started doing it i've never really done it until the last two weeks uh, and i just thought you know what? i'm just gonna mess around i just want to try different shit the first one i did just got a bunch of likes didn't get anything else i thought yeah. oh, my copy was good i was actually just trying to do a bit of an ebook um that i'd already done and i thought you know what this is gonna be more relatable right now tried to do that just got a yeah. shit of likes i was like Fuck, that's that's dumb then i changed that and tried to do a different copy a shorter um trying to visit my podcast and like didn't really get much out of that either so do you have any tips maybe for that in terms of kind of what you would it, go for it's tough so i used to do i used to run it i do still have a youtube channel but i haven't posted on it for like i, I think i posted one this year but otherwise I, I, don't, I used to post every single week so i used yeah. to advertise on on youtube which is quite good and on instagram and facebook but um it is tough. So like you really, really have to go through like the, you know, like when you pick the ad, you've got to pick like the right group that you're aiming at. You've mm -hmm. actually got to be like super specific with that. I think if you go too, too wild, then um, it is difficult. But the problem is it, it, it's really got to be like eye catching. I think, yeah. you know, cause like they, they say, I heard some stats before on a YouTube video, people click off within three seconds. That's wild. Yeah. Um, like on average. So you really got to pop out. And I don't know how like, It'll be different. Like if there's something you're really passionate about, you can keep drilling it and drilling it and drilling it. But lots of like clickbait. Like if you look at the top YouTubers, they've always got like their thumbnails really like, oh, I wonder what that is. I'll give it a watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is difficult, but I think you've got to be like a bit like with your target market, with you do whatever you're doing, you've got to be specific. Like, if you don't aim for anyone, you'll miss everyone. So hmm. it's like it's a case of really being specific with that, and then hopefully, and then and then as you said, it's trial and improvement. You put it in, all right, that didn't work quite. Well. I'll tweak it again, tweak it again. I yeah. kind of hope from there, but I've seen, uh, it is interesting. I think obviously the more money you put behind it as well, the more people it's going to reach. But like, again, that's, that, that's what Instagram wants. They just want you to spend all their money, all the, all your money in Instagram. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy, yeah. man. Like it is, I think it do, it comes down to just practicing your craft as, as always. Like even, I think this applies to a lot of people, not even PTs. Like if you have your own business or you're thinking about doing your own side hustle and you think Facebook ads are going to be super, super easy. Like it's not, <laughs> Um, no, yeah. like all of it's super difficult. Like we just, we just put a new one out, um, in the last two days that's slightly different to what we've normally done. We've kind of gone slightly a different perspective on what we're, I'm not going to say it because it's working really well. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's like the leads are just coming in so much quicker now and it's because it's completely different to what what's out there, but it's still helping people yeah. and, and solving problems. So yeah, cool. It, I like that. It is, it is, it is tough. Like I've got family members that have worked for social media for big conglomerates. Uh, my, my partner as well, she's does a lot with PR and stuff and effectively like they've been on lots of talks and this and the other. And, like if you post it organically is it is so impossible to grow. So realistically, like I know big conglomerates that won't even post organically, they'll only post via sponsored ads because they mm. just won't get the reach otherwise. Cool. Um, it's good. It's good insight, yeah, it Pete. Is, it's good it's, insight, it's, mate. It's tough. Yeah. Bronze and the brains, this guy. Look at that. Cool. All it's right. <laughs> so you know what? That's good. It's a nice little uh, nice little quick podcast so far. Originally when I started this, I was like 45 minutes max, and we're actually probably gonna be a little bit over that, which is cool because uh, you're a busy guy. So yeah. <laughs> we've covered pretty much all the main questions, man, uh, which is great. So nice. I appreciate that. So what we're gonna finish off on 
is a, a quick fire round. So I just started introducing these. Love um, a quick fire round. Yeah. So you ready for this? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm bringing the heat. So I hope it's, I hope it's outrageous. Hey, you know what? It wasn't the one thing you've already cut. Co- you've already covered though. Is I was gonna I was gonna ask you single or taken, but you dropped the GF in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, you don't see it on my social because I, I, I don't post my life on social media, so you don't like no one would know anything about only know about my dog. That's it. Yeah, mate, I'm the same. I'm the same. But, M- most Mrs. Wouldn't even let me. Surname. Yeah, I know. You know what? I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I was like, I was like, I gotta make sure I know Pete's last name before I get him on. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. Pete, yeah I'm, every, everyone's always thinks my surname's pure dim, so I'm like, sounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. Cool. So first question: uh, favorite brand, clothing brand. Uh, we're gonna go with Adidas. Oh, are you a three stripes kind of guy? Yeah, it was Adidas or Alphalete. They were the two. I'm wearing literally full Alphalete right now. But I thought you were gonna go Valenciaga, but all right. Um, uh, number two, go to casual shoes. So, if you're listening to this, Pete's going back in his nice little shelf and he's bringing over the Yeezys, isn't he? Yeah, the black, black Yeezys. The all black Yeezys. How many pairs of shoes do you have, Pete? Uh, I think like 18, 19. Nice. Are they all all kind of well, a, got, a mix of uh, Adidas, Nike and stuff? Or? Yeah, so I've got like six pairs of Yeezys, which is pretty uh, excessive. That's six pairs of um, Yeezys. And, this guy's got yeah, just really, a cool two Gs worth of Yeezys at his house. <laughs> My uh, God. That's cool. Uh, uh, I really well, we are, Kanye's like my biggest hero. But. So anyone in Cardiff right now <laughs> yeah. who's maybe going through a tough time financially, just, <laughs> just search for Pete's fucking address and just go right there. <laughs> and come steal my, steal my shoes. They're all big, though. They're all like size 13. So you'd be struggling getting them on. But, uh, and I've got like okay. some Jordans and then some Nice. Some you know and what? Respect, well, man. So. Not too many people have J's. Not too many people. Yeah, I want to get more J's, but... Yeah, you know what? Nike outlets, <laughs> Nike outlets. Surprisingly, they have J's for dirt cheap, and to the point where I've taken pictures and I sent them some, some pictures back home to the boys, and they're like, "Is that yeah. it?" And I'm like, "Yeah," and they're like, "What?" And I'm like, "Send me some." I'm like, "No." Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no I've got them on my feet. Yeah, you can't have these ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, re- I really want um uh, some like off white J's, but they're like six hundred pounds. So I'm kind of yeah, which ones? Off white six hundred pound uh, J's. Off white. Yeah, so you know they're like you know like Virgil Abloh has got off white that brand and he's got like off white. They've got okay. them in. They're like white, white and blue. Okay, uh, yeah. send me uh, a picture. Like send me a picture. Yeah. Cool. All right. Next question. If you could be sponsored by anyone, who would it be? I think we already know. Yeah, it, it would actually be Alphalete though. It wouldn't be Adidas. Weirdly. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Be- just because I fo- I really follow Christian Guzman, who's the guy who runs it. So I'd be like, yes, I will meet you now. Nice. Have you had any kit by that from them yet? No, mate, they're too big time. They've liked a few of my posts, which is like probably the best day of my week when that happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, other than that, no, nothing. Threw you off your tracking that day. Just so overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm just waiting. Like, come on. All right. Well, hopefully, hopefully you'll hear this, mate, and we'll, we'll get him to reach yeah. out. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Favorite go-to meal? Uh, it's two. It's Domino's Pizza, American Hot with cookies. <laughs> I love it. I was like, what? What are you on about American Heart? But I just click because yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yeah. That's that's a I'm not gonna lie, that's that's legit. That's nice. Yeah. Decent. Yeah. Uh I already asked you the singular taken thing. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say how serious is it? But uh, <laughs> yeah, like we own this flat five years, like for yeah, you're, you're for a long time. Yeah. Uh, go to one RM track. Uh Black skin head by Kanye West. That's a banger. Four in the morning. Yeah. And I'm zoning to stay and possess. Is yeah. it all? I keep it 300. Yeah. Like, like over 300 bitches. <laughs> Where does that? Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. so good. So good. Uh, hopefully, you don't get copyrighted for that, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, favorite, <laughs> <laughs> favorite, favorite artist? Uh, Kanye West. Really? Even, I even when he I went can... through his batshit crazy phase. I, I, I love him so much. I can't even explain it. Like people find it really hard, but I, I literally like him so much. Uh, I just like, I like it when he's sane. I like it when he's a little bit loopy. Um, um, he's found God now, which is also quite enjoyable. Um, <laughs> That's so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not religious. It's just fun to watch, but, um, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, lie. His no, plane, just, his plane thing with, uh, James Corden was, was nice. It's sick. Yeah. It's good. I, I, the first time I heard that album, I thought it was rubbish. 
Yeah, because uh, the songs are quite short. But then I've been listening to it a lot since since lockdown, and it all makes sense now. You know, That's so uh, no, for no, anybody is, who's not watching this on YouTube, Pete Pete's as white as they come. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's just it's pretty funny that he loves Kanye. You know what? I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I love Kanye West too. I still love him. He's fucking weird, bro. I yeah, him. I like, but I like him as well as a person. I think he's great because he just says what he wants all the time, <laughs> and he needs more of that. So yeah. All right, I like it. All right, so you yeah. would vote for him for president when he goes for it, mate? I've got a white T-shirt that says "Vote for Yeezy." I'm not lying. <laughs> Yeezy for president. Sorry, that's jokes. All right, cool. Yeah. Last one, mate. Last one. Bad habit of yours that you want to get rid of. Da, 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 da. Uh, I'm probably on my phone too much. Easy. Mm. Yeah, tough to yeah, now I'm too, right? too much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just cool. Put a phone down. Put a phone down. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. When you get your uh, when you get your weekly report, you're just like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I don't even look at that. I'm like, swipe. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I saw it the other day. Literally yeah. same thing. I kind of like just did a quick glimpse. I was like, oh Jesus. That's terrible. Um, yeah, cool. no, it's not. Yeah, it's worse at the moment, though, isn't it? Because we're using it for like Zoom and for everything else. So. Yeah, exactly. All right, Matt. Well, listen, that's, um, that's pretty much everything that I had down. So I really appreciate you taking the time. It was actually quite fun getting to probably know you a little bit better. Um, yeah, yeah. I feel I'll like I don't know you, though. I'll have to come back and ask <laughs> you questions. Yeah, you can. Yeah, switch switch roles. But um, switch yeah, I'm around. sure I'm sure we'll we'll be having uh, a few beers when this is all over, mate. But so just a bit of an outro. So Pete, where can people find you? What are your socials at? What do you got going on in your life? All that stuff. At Peter Pure Gym. That's it. That's it. The only place you can find me. That's Twitter, it. Instagram. Uh, Twitter. Yeah, I don't I don't do Twitter. So literally just oh. Instagram. That's it. So when you I take screenshots of like your Twitter, is that old stuff? Ah, uh, see that oh. is um, <laughs> welcome to the game. Well, yeah. Sky actually told me about that. It's an app called. So I'm not verified on Twitter, but in those tweets that I screenshot, it says I'm verified with a blue tick. It's called mm -hmm. prank tweet, and you can just make tweets. So yeah, we were told before that like photos of tweets um, does quite well on Instagram stories. Prank tweet, yeah. I'm yeah, prank tweet shit. called. I'm so that so shit yeah. Down free app so do that and you can make you can even add how many people have retweeted and stuff but yeah so yeah i don't have ah, to go. really man that is that's golden you know this is the type yeah. of shit people make money off of and you're just like how do they make money off like how did that become an idea yo i'm gonna make an app yeah i see a fake tweet that i can tweet. put as many likes and retweets and it's yeah but it's naughty though because in the like most recent election in the uk there was people making fake tweets of, of uh, the other parties and posting yeah, yeah. them and they were going viral it was really like it's, it's not cool don't no, do that, no. people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Only, only for Insta. Awesome, man. Well, listen, yeah, I really yeah. appreciate that. So, like uh, Pete said, go find him at Peter Pure Gym on uh, on Insta. Uh, again, he's he's got some pretty cool stuff on there. He's quite a funny guy. So, I really appreciate it. I'm Dan Q, guy behind Abante Performance. So that's A B A N T E Performance. Uh, yeah, Insta, Facebook, uh, TikTok. Now, trying to make it happen. So, appreciate it, bro. Um, I'm just gonna pause. Hey, uh, I'm gonna pause this guy. <laughs> Uh...